If you're ready to start back, we're going to talk about landscape management plans. Everybody's favorite subject. And to start us off will be Lee Peters. She's the certification manager, if I can say that correctly. Certification manager for the American Forest Foundation. By the way, I'm Russell Hubright with the South Carolina Forestry Commission. Should introduce myself as well, right? So Lee works with the American Tree Farm System to ensure credibility of the program. She's a graduate of Auburn University. Any other Auburn grads? Go War Eagles? Oh, there we go. And registered forester in Alabama. She has 20 years of experience. She started when she was 12. <laughs> in forest industry with a background in procurement, harvesting, forest land management, and works in states across the south from Oklahoma to Georgia. Prior to her role at AFF, she worked as director of landowner programs for the Alabama Forestry Association, where she helped private landowners acquire certification and achieve their sustainable forest management goals. So, Lee? Good morning. Good morning. Everybody hear me? That microphone's pretty hot. Okay, well, my name is Lee Peters, and in addition to um, the landscape management plan, my job as certification manager for American Tree Farm System is to ensure the credibility of our certification program. So I work with our program on the standards that we have, that we adhere to as a program, as well as work with um, our third-party verification. So we are a system that is third-party audited, and so I work with that uh, system as well. So a little bit about what we do at American Forest Foundation. If you're not familiar with us, we work directly with private forest landowners. That is our primary goal, our primary objective. We want to help them not only achieve sustainable forest management on the ground, but if there are conservation opportunities, if there are um, other opportunities that are available to landowners that benefit us all, then we work in conjunction with our partners to achieve those goals. And we work with many of you in the room here. I see a lot of familiar faces um, because we do partner with so many different organizations um, across the U.S. So as we, it's already been alluded to several times today, the, the primary forest land ownership here in the United States is private family forest owners. And if we have lofty goals of preserving endangered species or conserving habitat or clean water or carbon sequestration, these big lofty goals that all of us have, not only in this room, but as a society, we're going to have to engage private forest landowners. That's the only way that we can accomplish all of these big major goals that we have in front of us. But what we also know is for most private family forest ownerships, their land holdings are relatively small. 67 acres on average, and that varies state by state, right? So we're not going to be able to achieve anything by just working with one landowner. We're going to have to work with a landscape full of landowners to achieve these goals that we have. We also know there's 21 million for family forest owners in the U.S., so that means that we collectively as foresters and natural resource professionals are going to have to engage with each one of these family forest landowners individually, right? Because they're not coming to us as a group and saying, we'd like to do something together. We're, we're really engaging them on a personal level. We're meeting with them one-on-one. -on -one. What happens on their land is very personal to them and they want to make sure that they're being heard. This is my goal, this is what I want to achieve. How can I do that? Can you give me tools to do that? Collectively, there's 290 million acres of family-owned forest here in the US. So that's more than Texas and California combined. It's a big area, it's just spread across the US. Another thing that we know when we're working with family forest landowners is that there are a huge array of challenges, both for us as the natural resource professionals that are trying to work with them, but also for them to achieve their goals. There's a huge lack of awareness, so they don't know what they don't know. They might drive by their neighbor's property and say, I would love for my property to look like that, but they don't know the steps to take to get to that point. Or they may say, I love wildlife, but they don't understand what sustainable forest management is and how that benefits the wildlife that they want to do. And it's our job to really reach out to them, to educate them, to let them know about these things that they can achieve on their land. There's a lack of expertise. Only 20% of landowners have received advice from a, formal, from a forester. 
All of you in this room are the front line of that. You understand this more than anybody else that there's just a lack of resources. I know, um, so I live in Alabama and currently in Alabama, you know, we face challenges. I know the Forestry Commission faces challenges of just having a forester present in a county. Not all counties are covered by a forester. I'm sure it's the same in other states as well, that we just have this unequal ratio of landowners that need assistance and need professional advice and need to meet with a, land, meet with a forester and the number of foresters that are actually available to that landowner. Um, for us in American Tree Farm System, we're a certification process and it's time consuming. So a forester gets a call from a landowner and from start, introductory meeting, walking the property to the point that they get a personal um, stand specific land, uh, management plan written for them it can be two to six months. It, in some cases it could even be more if that particular forester in that particular county has a, just a backlog of landowners that are really wanting to have a management plan. And then in addition to that, there's just a high cost. There's a high cost um, for some state landowners. It's um, the cost of getting a management plan done. For others, it's the cost of the action actually taking place on the ground. Everything that a landowner wants to do takes money and resources, and in a lot of cases, they just don't have that, or they don't know where to go for that cost assistance. So American Forest Foundation started looking at this and going, well, we want to serve as many landowners as possible to achieve all of these lofty goals that I mentioned earlier, where we're doing conservation work and we're promoting sustainable forestry and we're really helping landowners on the ground because we have a huge network of landowners and foresters that work with us. But we also know that this individual management plan, which is what has historically been used, was not only for tree farm, but for any type of cost share assistance that a landowner was going to go to go for if they were going to um, apply to be a part of forest stewardship program. Anything that a landowner wanted to do required them to have an individual management plan for their piece of property. But what we also knew was that for foresters, it could take them, depending on the property size and whether they had a great template to use or if they were writing it from scratch, it could take 40 hours, it could take 60 hours, it could take 80 hours to write these management plans for these landowners um, because of just the time and intensity it takes to meet the requirements of all these different programs that the landowner wants to be a part of. The other thing we know is that these management plans, I think it was alluded earlier, um, is not what affects change on the ground. So in other words, you have a landowner and they want to do something on their property, for the most part, they're not going back and reading this nice management plan that a professional forester has taken 40 hours to put together for them. They're going back to that professional forester and saying, hey, I think I want to do this. Can you help me? And so with that, we started looking, okay, well, if the management plans are really a time burden for our foresters and we're lacking foresters to work with the landowners, and we know that this is a barrier to participation. And I just realized that you guys aren't seeing the same thing I am. <laughs> um, so, going back about five years ago, when American Forest Foundation started looking at the idea of a landscape management plan, they started this idea with, hey, what if we develop this plan that could be used for the tree farm program to enroll landowners in this program? There was a need there. And so the first thing they did is um, make sure that this was going to be a credible um, idea because we are third party audited as American Tree Farm System and so we wanted to make sure that it was going to hold up. And so in fact the landscape management plans are endorsed by PEFC and American Tree Farm System guidelines and I'll go into it in a little more detail but Florida and Alabama um, their landscape management plan and landowners enrolled in those plans actually recently in 2019 went through a PwC assessment um, and so I'll talk a little bit more about that. It reduces the barriers to participation. You know when we developed this we were thinking about tree farm certification but we now know that there's other applications for landowners to use, landowners and foresters to use these plans to kind of alleviate that burden of the individual management plan. It's cost and time effective, so instead of 
Um, foresters working solely on the bulk of their time on paperwork, they can really focus their efforts on the ground and um, to spend in time with the landowner and really having that conversation, building that relationship, which is going to then affect changes on the ground. We can use these to demonstrate impact um, and conservation opportunities. So um, it's been mentioned earlier about you know some of the conservation um, activities that American Forest Foundation does, and we can use these landscape management plans as a tool. And we can say, okay, we have so many landowners that are working on all these different conservation projects, and it just gives us another way to kind of engage those landowners, whether they're interested in tree farm or not. Um, it gives us another opportunity to engage those landowners. So the landscape management plan components, it's basically an aggregate of all the information that you could ever need for a forest application within the defined scope of the landscape management plan. And so with that we have, it addresses for us all the standards, uh, performance measures, indicators for the American tree farm system. It also contains a GEO database and so what we do with this is it allows an opportunity to kind of aggregate all the mapping capabilities that are available within a state or within an area that we're going to implement this and then that becomes a resource. The landscape management plan above all else is a tool that foresters can use. It's a central location of all the information that a forester might need to help a landowner make a decision on the ground. We include forest types. Again, this is within the bounds of the landscape management plan. Landowner and landscape objectives, and this is really important as we talk about impact and conservation opportunities. So we wanna make sure that if we have landscape level objectives to do certain things within the area of these landscape management plans that we're including that information within the plan. We have civil cultural options. So again, putting forth a wide array of information in front of foresters, in front of landowners, this landscape management plan becomes a resource for them to go back to reference to. It also contains all the components that they would need to cover in an individual plan. It just covers it for a broad range of wherever the landscape area is that the plan, the plan covers. It also includes forest resources. So we were talking earlier about forest action plans, wildlife action plans, state BMP, state regulations, state soil types, threatened and endangered species. Think about all these different components that we normally drill down to just what impacts that individual landowner on their individual piece of property. And we've put an aggregate of information together that covers a wide landscape so that no matter where your property is within that landscape, you can go and look and see what particularly affects that landowner. But it's all put together, therefore saving the forester time, but also providing just this valuable resource to the forester. So um, some questions about how this works. Um, so prior to meeting with the landowner, the forester takes a look at, so I talked about that geo database, so he's got some spatial data in front of him. Um, a key example of this, for example, in Alabama, we have something called strategic habitat units. There's a huge focus in Alabama right now on aquatic habitats because we have so many aquatic species. And so part of our geo database for Alabama includes those strategic habitat units. So a forester prior to going out to meet with the landowner can go to that geo database, look and see you know, where their property is, what might affect that landowner that they hadn't considered before. And a lot of it's local knowledge the foresters already have, but if they don't, then this is kind of, again, that one-stop shop where they can go and look at these resources. And then they go and meet with the landowner. And the idea behind this is they identify the landowner's objectives, no matter what they are. They talk to them about other things that need to be considered. So perhaps the landowner has gopher tortoise on their property, or perhaps they're located in one of these strategic habitat units. Perhaps they have some lofty goal that they want to, you know, preserve some species on their property. And so this really gives them all the information they need. Again, focusing on the relationship between the forester and the landowner. The paperwork is all put together in that landscape management plan. So the forester has professional um, knowledge, but then he can also reference back to the landscape management plan and give the landowner advice. 
Then for the American Tree Farm System, we capture that individual landowner's information in our inspection form, but for other states that are using the landscape management plan for tree farm and for stewardship, they have other mechanisms that they capture that information for the landowner, what specifically applies to their piece of property, what they need to know, if there's any takeaway information that landowner needs. And then the idea is the landowner then acts on that forester's advice and the relationship continues. The forester likes this because he gets more time on the ground, less time doing paperwork. The landowner likes it because the forester comes and, and gives him pieces of information. Um, we had an example again in Alabama where um, the forester met with the landowner. The landowner was so excited that he was part of a strategic habitat unit that he wanted to know if he could get a sign to put out on his <laughs> property because he was like, well, this is great. I didn't yeah. even know that there were threatened endangered species in this little creek that runs through my property. And so, um, just one example, but it really is focusing on the connection between the forester and the landowner. So we currently have two landscape management plans that have been implemented. We have several more in development. You'll hear from these guys and, and um, about what else is being developed on the horizon, but let's start with flora. It was the, the pilot program, American Forest Foundation um, piloted this concept in the Florida Panhandle and saw um, just tremendous results, and I'll leave it to Jen to talk more about Florida specifically, but just had tremendous results, a huge um, positive feedback in just the process and the procedures. And so then Alabama decided they were going to try to imp develop and implement a plan as well. And in Alabama's plan, it was housed by the uh, Alabama Forestry Association. Again, each state looks different, who houses the plan, how they finance the plan, um, I just encourage you, if your state's looking at this, to talk to several other states that are looking at developing and implementing a plan because there's multiple resources out there to consider um, if your state's considering this. So both of these states implemented in 2018, and so they were implemented for a full year before they were assessed by a third-party assessor in 2019, and I'm pleased to say that both of them went through the assessment uh, with no major nonconformity. So the plan is proven that it works, that it can offer, be used to offer certification to landowners, but we also know there's other applications such as forest stewardship that this could be used for. And so um, to talk a little bit more about the results, well, first I'll just tell you, if you're interested in looking at Alabama or Florida's plan, both of them are publicly available. So you can go to the website here at Alabama Forestry Association, and I'll be sure and send this out, so if you want to share this via email. But um, if you're interested, take a look. So within both of these, you'll see a copy of the landscape management plan, the special data links, that geodatabase I was talking about, and a forester's guide on how to use the plan. So we want to put some information in front of foresters if they're choosing to use this tool. Um, and then a web mapper. And then for Florida as well, And Florida has a website as well. And so we implemented this plan. I'm just going to use Alabama as, a, as an example to you. We implemented this plan in 2018. And as you can see, um, we had initial results of over double the enrollment in the tree farm program using the landscape management plan. It's important to note that during this time, our inspector force did not change. We didn't increase in inspectors. This was just simply a factor <laughs> of it took less time to work with the landowner on the ground. And so we saw some initial results that were very good. And in 2000. 2019 and um, then latest report that I've seen it says we were able to to keep that same result um, and so we're very pleased with that it I think it shows the proof is in the pudding that um, you know it works we can engage more landowners this way um, and with that I'm going to hand it off to um, my counterparts up here <laughs> <laughs> 